guys how to do a, a moving average on this large data set of sunspots, uh, which began in 1749. Um, the reason why I like time series so much is because it's actually it's quite simple to perform, and the results are quite actionable. So it's a really gratifying way to start out when you're uh, when you're learning data analysis. So, uh, like you said in the in the article, first we're going to look at this time series to identify uh, the seasonality. So I'm just going to highlight the entire two columns. <clears throat> going to go into insert and create a graph. This is just a standard line graph where we can see that the seasonality is. Uh, well, there, frankly, there is a seasonality. Uh, we can look down to the dates to try to identify the number of years it takes to, to see a full cycle. And it looks like we're going from 1749, 53, 57 to 61 is when we're doing one full cycle. And then we can just look again uh, from 61, 65, 69. So it's almost uh, 70 there. So it looks like our cycle is about 10 years. So we're going to take that information. We can get rid of this chart now. We're going to take that information and say, well, okay, we're going to go then from roughly 50, and this takes just a second, roughly 50 down to, down to 60. Now I'm going to start at the beginning of the period, and we see that this is line 133. So we're going to have a lot, a lot of data in our first, uh, in our first average. So I know that it starts at line 133. We're going to start entering our moving average uh, algorithm, if you will, into the column C. Here it is. And if we double click in the bottom right corner, this is going to go all the way to the bottom of the sheet. And we see that uh, it actually starts to smooth out pretty well at the end because we've got 77 with some small variants here, uh, whereas there's still like a pretty considerable amount of seasonality uh, in, the, in the actual data. So now that we've got this, let's go ahead and, and take those dates all the way down and graph it to see what our moving average has done. So we go to insert. Look at that. So I'm just going to make this bigger for you so you can see. Uh, the series two is obviously our moving average data, and the series one is our original data. So, this this is what a moving average does. At least when we've when we've taken a a full seasonal cycle, it sort of follows the trend but smooths it out to make it a little bit more approachable and a little bit less intimidating. So often you'll find yourself in a situation where you need to present a graph to management, and it's it's a better idea to use a moving average like this than to use uh, the original raw data because it just looks too chaotic. So that is to say you you can use this uh, in a management report, but you don't want to use it when you're trying to predict a specific value uh, coming in the future because if you do, as you can see, you will end up with a very centric, a very centric line or data, or I guess output. It doesn't really reflect reflect the reality. So if you need to say at one year, one month's point in time in the future, um, this won't be a good reference point. So what we would do here is essentially, we can go ahead and delete this graph, and we want to say that okay now we want to start substituting this month here because now we want to say that we've gotten to the end of the original data so now we need to take the data that we were using the data that we've created and start submitting it here so let's go ahead and start making a reference and this we will copy down let's say just a few lines so I can show you within one frame so now these are all at zero but you can see that they're all referencing the cell one up and to the right. So as we build this, if I've done this correctly, we will slowly build on our own data. Now if I were to, for example, delete one of these, the average will still continue but it will be missing that, that, that point. So if you understand what we've done, at, at the point where we reach the end of the raw data, now we've begun 
to start building a machine learning algorithm. This, all of this data here, is a predictive and it has value, but it's not based on any any hard hard data. It's based completely on something that we built ourselves. So we can say that it's slightly less reliable uh, than if it were based on uh, on real data, but it will follow that moving average trend that we saw in the graph before.